Hey everyone, welcome back to another week of Threat Thursday, a weekly series by Scythe where we dive into different threats by consuming separate threat intelligence, creating adversary emulation plans, and sharing those plans with the security community. Scythe is an enterprise-grade post-exploitation framework where you can build malware automation quickly and easily, allowing you to emulate some of the most complex adversaries in minutes. So let's dive into this week's threat for Zerk Bear. Scythe has a number of customers in the energy sector, so we figured this one would be an ideal threat actor to understand, especially because it's been on the FBI and CISA's radar recently, with an alert released on October 22nd of 2020. According to this alert, this ABT has been targeting various U.S. government networks from state to tribal to even aviation. Through consuming the cyber threat intelligence, we learned that it establishes initial access through use of various CVEs, but then looks to just establish its access on critical infrastructure for later use. So Berserk Bear has been known to go under some other threat actor names, such as Dragonfly or Dragonfly 2.0. So we took a look at this, these MITRE attack mappings before mapping them all to one single cohesive uh, emulation plan. So we can see in this MITRE attack mapping, after we combine all of it, it does a number of discovery techniques, collection techniques, credential access, defense evasion, and much more. So for collection, it does things such as file directory, discovery, network share discovery, process discovery, and etc. So for our automation, we did the exact same thing. We then did file and directory discovery, as well as network share discovery, T1135, as well as some process discovery, as well as querying the registry to find more information about the system. All these things are important for Berserk Bear to establish its foothold on critical infrastructure. One of the things that Berserk Bear also does, other than querying the registry, is that it goes ahead and adds keys to the registry. Now, the, when we emulate adversaries, we want to make sure that we're keeping our malware non-destructive. So what we did in steps 48 to 50 is that we added an example key, and then we queried it for the example key to make sure that we were successful, and then we actually go and delete it so that we don't leave any information on the system that we don't want to. Berserk Bear also does a number of other things, such as it uses Mimi Cats, as well as grabbing a print screen, as well as creating these files on the desktop here. So let's take a look at a live campaign for Berserk Bear. We can see that our campaign st status is still active, which means that we can still go ahead and grab the binaries here. They're all generated uniquely, or even the direct download links, or delivered in other methods. We can see that currently it's been deployed to one endpoint, which is desktop-cbob, and we can go ahead and open it to actually see all the steps that ran successfully. So we can go ahead and expand each event. So this one will look pretty familiar. This is that registry key addition query and deletion that I was talking about, where we go ahead and add example keys and delete them, as well as we can see that we create files as well as we can see that Mimikatz ran successfully, as well as all the other discovery that we added in, such as process discovery, uh, file, direct, file and directory discovery, system owner user discovery. But one thing that you'll notice from this campaign that's a little different from other threat as we've done in the past is that we don't actually shut down the implant. So in, in previous Threat Thursdays, we've actually added a command controller dash dash shutdown. But since Berserk Bear is meant to establish its foothold and then maintain it for later use, we went ahead and left this campaign live so that a supposed emulated attacker would be able to use the web shell and interface with Berserk Bear manually, such as grabbing a print screen um, or such as running Mimi Cats um, or creating files, run, all of that. So now that we've gone ahead and actually run this campaign, we can also generate some reports, such as a MITRE attack report where we can see each cell and each technique and see what ran successfully, as well as a MITRE, as well as an executive report where we can see how far down the kill chain we got, as well as C2 traffic and actions taken. If we went ahead and deployed this on a number of devices, it would also give us a summary of all of the active devices, allowing us to see what options we have for emulation further. So that's it for this week's Threat Thursday on Berserk Bear. We hope you learned something and found some value out of this. Definitely, if you are a Scythe user, try out the Eversera emulation plan on our community threats GitHub. The link is in the blog post, as well as take a look at the rest of what we wrote. Also, this week we partnered with Cyborg Hunter, where Austin did an amazing job in talking about the detection 
as well as his video on how he emulated some CVEs. So thanks to the Cyborg Hunter team, and as always, I hope you enjoyed.